Good morning, Saints of Cross Lutheran. This is Amanda, and we are joined today with Katie Nisnik from Turning Point. And this is our first installment of Mental Health Mondays, although this month we're a little late due to, of course, technology issues. So we're on Mental <laughs> Health Wednesdays this week, um, but we're going to go ahead and just jump right in and learn more about how domestic violence and mental health um, can go together and from Katie's perspective about mental health. So good morning, Katie, how are you? Good morning, I'm doing well. Thanks for having me, Amanda. Thank you so much. So we'll just go right into it. So Katie, can you tell us a little bit about um, your position at Turning Point, what Turning Point does, the services that are provided at Turning Point, if you just wanna kind of give us an overview of that? Yeah, absolutely. So again, my name is Katie Nisnik. I'm the Sexual Assault Services Director at Turning Point. We've served victims of domestic and sexual violence. Uh, we are a nonprofit victim service organization. So we serve Pearson St. Croix counties. Um, we have our shelter location in River Falls. And then we have a outreach office in um, New Richmond. That's our St. Croix County outreach office. So um, basically all of our services fall under um, support, um, option exploration, and then helping people get access to those options once they've decided where they want to go. Um, so support groups, um, legal advocacy, medical advocacy, um, information referrals about things that are available in the community, you know, all that good stuff. Perfect. So can you give us a little bit of statistical information about the, the demographics, about the people that you serve, about how many people were served, let's say in 2020? Sure, yeah. Um, so in 2020, that was a really unique year, right? Like we all experienced that. Um, so we know that the pandemic created additional barriers for victims of domestic and sexual violence to be accessing services. A lot of people were, were afraid um, to reach out and to do those things. And then um, we're also forced to be isolated and potentially um, unsafe homes. Um, so while we know that these barriers existed, um, it, it, it definitely did create um, lower numbers than we've typically had, um, you know, because of those barriers. So usually we serve um, between eight and 900 people. In 2020, we served um, over 600, and then 200 of those um, were uh, sexual assault victims. And then we provided over 5,000 nights of shelter, um, the majority of that um, being adults, but we actually only serve about 10% of our people through the shelter. The rest is done from um, community work and outreach services. Perfect. Thank you so much for that. So Katie, can you tell us how violence and mental health go together? Um, how, how do those two things relate to, to one another? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I can speak from the, the victim standpoint of that, um, because as advocates, we do get a lot of, of training, you know, in how uh, traumatic experiences, which is what a lot of, you know, that's what our people are going through, um, about how that impacts people's minds and bodies. So, I mean, there's a lot of things that come out of it, um, you know, PTSD, depression, anxiety, um, people have nightmares um, that starts to impact them, you know, physically um, and in a lot of other aspects of their lives, you know, losing, um, losing jobs and, and housing potentially, you know, all of those things. Um, so as advocates, we, um, we provide emotional support for people. So we do safety planning. Um, we talk about coping skills, um, and then like how people are going to survive their day. And so we're not mental health professionals. We can be a good supplement to therapy because we do have that deep understanding of um, the dynamics of domestic and sexual violence. So that can be validating for people. Um, but if people are expressing that they have, you know, those higher needs, which is common with people that have experienced trauma, 
um, then that, that drifts out of our role. And then we work together with getting them connected with other resources that are at a higher mental health level to get them their needs met. Wonderful. That perfect. Thank you. Um, so can you talk more about psychological and emotional abuse from your experience? Yes, absolutely. So um, from my experience in working with victims, so I've been at Turning Point for almost 11 years now. Um, and a lot of the time, people will tell me that the emotional and the mental abuse that they're experiencing is worse than the physical or the threat of physical. And that's being like their own personal views and opinions on that. Um, because that's really what domestic and sexual violence is. It's, it's about power and control. Um, so being a victim and survivor of those things, um, you struggle with getting that control back over um, your life. And there's some other consequences of that. Um, and so domestic violence is often referred to as being crazy making behavior, um, because if you know, it's all part of the breakdown and maintaining that power and control. Um, if you've created, you know, you've taken away that person's self-worth, um, you've taken away their sanity and their ability to, you know, to make decisions and things within that, then that creates more dependence on their partner and less likely for them to leave their partner, which is the ultimate goal of, you know, an abusive partner is to maintain that power control, maintain that relationship in the way that they want to. And when you're talking about domestic violence, you're not talking about just um, physical violence. You're talking about psychological, emotional, financial abuse. You're talking about all different types of abuse that fall under the domestic violence category, yes. right? Yes, yes, that's correct. There are, there are a lot more types of violence and a lot of ways that um, people maintain control over their partners. And physical violence often isn't used. So I know a lot of people think that if they're not experiencing that physical violence, that they're not actually in an abusive relationship. And that's not true um, because this emotional and these mental aspects really play a, a really large role in maintaining that power and control. Um, so yeah, so using, using privileges, um, you know, from being in positions of power, using children, um, never being accountable for that person's actions. It's always their partner's fault. You know, all of these different um, dynamics and these different um, slices of the abuse um, often show up more so than the violence. Usually the violence is, is when it's escalated. So like it's, it's the most dangerous time for somebody when they're leaving an abusive relationship because that's when the partner will go to, um, will escalate, you know, to do what they feel like they can do to maintain that person in, in their relationship, to maintain their control. Um, so a lot of times, you know, people aren't using that physical aspect until way later. It's mostly the emotional and the mental abuse. And that all relates, yeah. that all relates to the mental health, like you had talked about, like all of those Correct. relate back to mental health. And like you said about the crazy making um, behaviors. Yes. So what yep. can we do um, as a faith community to best support survivors and victims of violence? What can we do to best support them? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the, as a faith community, um, you know, or just a community in general, right. it's when people are coming forward and disclosing things to you, it's believing them. So it's not being that judge and jury in that moment. That's not what that person is looking for. You know, it's believing what they're saying to you and then connecting them with some sort of support. Um, and then it's, um, you know, also uh, holding, you um, those perpetrators, you know, accountable in the ways that we can hold them accountable, you know, um, and just creating a culture of safety and support where people do feel like they can, um, you know, say if something's going on. And then also, if you're noticing something different about somebody, um, maybe they are, maybe they're participating in things less, Maybe they used to, you know, dress up and, and wear makeup and have their hair done. And, and now, so they seem to be more covered, more reserved, more modest, you know, after they've um, taken a new partner. 
And so, you know, some of those aspects, we can, we can check in with people and be like, hey, how's it going? You know, I've noticed that you, your style is a bit different, or I noticed that you haven't been participating as much, like we miss you. Do you, do you need anything? Are you doing okay? And, you know, checking in on those pieces is going to be better than um, pointing out or downgrading somebody's partner because that, that makes defenses go up, right? Sure. Um, so, so yeah, checking, checking in, being a good neighbor, believing in that way, and then referring people for support, um, and then, um, you know, posting information and stuff about resources available to them. I think that's perfect. I think, I, I love that you talked about different ways that we could check in with and like you said, it's not just being a faith community, but being part of a community in general and just checking in with people and paying attention, believing and listening. I think that, thank you for that explanation. So what about supporting Turning Point as a whole? What can we do to best support Turning Point, the advocates, the volunteers, your services? What, what can we do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so it's, you know, it is inviting us to participate in things like that. Like we, we appreciate, appreciate that. It's a way for us to talk about our services, you know, and um, do some, you know, education around the topics because we don't, we don't know, right? Like we might know some, um, some assumptions and some things that we might have heard, but, um, you know, to really talk about dynamics and, and get that type of information is, is awesome. Knowledge is power, right? Um, so that piece, it's making referrals to, to us um, if people are in need of services. And then, you know, participating in our events. Um, I know that we talked about y'all are doing um, a drive for products. So, you know, we always need stuff like hygiene products, um, food, um, you know, diapers, towels, pill like, like all of those, all those basic needs, you know, because um, as a nonprofit organization, we do depend on community support um, for some of that. So um, anything, anything like that is appreciated. And then if you're, if you are interested, I mean, donating uh, your time um, to assess, we can always find stuff for people to do. So yeah. Perfect. Well, thank you, Katie, so much. We appreciate you taking the time to talk with us about mental health and relating that to domestic violence and telling us more about Turning Point. We really appreciate that. Congregation, if you're interested in learning more about Turning Point, you can certainly reach out to myself and I can connect you with Katie or somebody else with at Turning Point. Um, we would be happy to get you hooked up with that. So Katie, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time and all that you do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks.